Hey what's up everybody, thank you for checking this video. If you want to see more, please leave a like and subscribe. But even if you don't, enjoy and happy coding. From a developer that hates plugins, here's a plugin that doesn't suck. Elementor is a live page builder for WordPress. It's amazing, it's open source, faster than the competition, easy to use, it doesn't require any coding for anyone to just build a beautiful page. I think I'm gonna say it, yes, I'm gonna say it. It's the best page builder for WordPress. I said it. It's totally free for you to use it, download it and install it on all the websites that you want and if you really really like it you should consider buying the pro version that it's not expensive at all and it comes with a tons of new features. Click the link in the description below the video to learn more. Why you should use a CSS preprocessor. Coding is art. There's so much to learn and so much to practice every day and when you just started learning the basics of web development, the easiest thing to do when it comes to front-end styling is writing simple and plain CSS. The smack in the face happens when you stumble upon a project that uses CSS preprocessor like SCSS, SAS or less and your word of certainty and confidence starts to crumble. It can feel like a waste of time and energy setting up a preprocessor for the first time. Your SAS file doesn't work out of the box like a regular CSS and in order to make it readable for the browser you have to learn and set up something like Gulp or Webpack which add an extra layer of complexity to your project that you really wish you hadn't. This is the very first roadblock and probably the main reason why junior developers give up. Using a compiler is hard and convoluted, but if you stop for a second and step back, this is actually a non-problem. Just by doing a simple Google search, you'll be able to find plenty of prepackaged resources and solutions that you can add to your project folder in order to automatically deal with your SAS bundling or less bundling. You don't actually need to understand Gulp or Webpack in order to use them, which is kind of amazing. Plenty of ready to use solutions are available online and the setup time is really minor. Many of my students and many of you guys watching my videos as well asked the same exact question when first encountering a CSS preprocessed file. Why should I use SAS or less if I can have the same exact results in plain CSS without the necessity of wasting my time in compiling and bundling my source code? That's too much overhead. This is a legit question and you shouldn't feel stupid or inadequate in asking it or thinking about it. Everyone has this exact doubt sooner or later. The short answer is because it's better. But I'm sure this answer won't convince you at all, so let's dive a little bit deeper into the reasons or the main reasons why you should be using or learning a CSS preprocessor. Writing less code. After the initial struggle of figuring out how to integrate and compile a bundler in your project, there's nothing much left to do other than writing way less code to achieve way better results. With a CSS preprocessor, you'll have the ability to easily create reusable components, make your styling more modular, use mixing, for each loops, dynamically import external resources, define variables, extend code portions and so on. Some of these things can be also done in regular CSS, but the amount of code that you end up writing is way less with a preprocessor. Look at this code snippet for example. In SAS I can define some variables inside an array and with a for each loop I can quickly generate a modular color component. I can definitely do the same in CSS, but I have to manually write those variations one by one and if in a later moment I decide to add or remove a variation, with SAS it's just a matter of writing another variable, while in CSS I have to duplicate the same snippet of code a lot of times. Building reusable libraries. How many times did you start a project and you wanted to reuse some CSS that you wrote a while ago in a previous project? But to make it work, you had to painfully edit all those pixel values, color variations, or classes declarations to adapt it for your new project. With a preprocessor, you can have your starter toolkit relying on one single file that automatically adapts to a simple variable change. This level of modularity and scalability cannot be achieved in regular CSS with the same elegance and speed used in a preprocessor. Future-proofing your code and your career. 
if you want to be taken seriously as a developer and have a recruiter considering your portfolio, you need to demonstrate your ability to understand and adopt modern technologies and techniques. Unfortunately, in our very particular field, it's really hard to keep up and be always up to date considering a new framework gets released pretty much once every three months. But nonetheless, you shouldn't be so out of the loop that you can't understand the benefits of a CSS preprocessor or not even be able to implement it. These preprocessors have been around since 2010. There's not a single excuse for you to not know how to use at least one of them. And even if your projects are amazingly written and organized in plain CSS, chances are that sooner or later you're gonna stumble upon a project you'll have to maintain that was previously written and built with SAS or less, and that's gonna be painful. So, in my opinion, these are the most obvious reasons why you should use a CSS preprocessor. If you don't know what to do or how to do it, I'm here to help you. Check out my Alicad crash course on SAS on my channel to boost your skills and start coding amazing things. As usual, let me know what you think. Let me know what are the reasons why you should use a CSS preprocessor or the reasons why you shouldn't use it. If regular CSS is catching up with the availability of variables and regular loops, or if you see something even better coming in the future, please let me know with a comment below. Thanks for watching and I talk to you in the next one.